of the first weekend of the 2018 men's and women's basketball championships is just about behind us. We welcome you back to Everett Community College, the site of this year's tournament. Hello, everybody. I'm Wes Tucker. I'm going to be keeping you company through this Elite Eight matchup between the Peninsula Pirates and the South Puget Sound Clippers. Both teams had a hard-fought battle to get here. Peninsula taking down Clackamas and South Puget Sound taking down Yakima Valley. Don't you go anywhere. We'll have plenty of action for you, but before we send you off, we'd like to remind you today's game brought to you by the Northwestern Athletic Conference. Fans, be sure to check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. Also, visit nwacsports.org for the most recent information on schedules, scores, stats, and more. The first day of school is kind of scary. You don't know your teachers yet or who your friends will be. But school is really important. It's how you learn things and grow. Okay, I'm ready. You're going to do great, Mommy. For you. For them. Clark College. Get started today at clark.edu. number more than living paycheck to paycheck you're a multitasking life engineer full of experience that's why you belong here where you'll find more one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty with programs that can lead to in-demand jobs and the support you need to get where you want to go all at an affordable price get started now Edmonds Community College edcc.edu I'm Danny Horton, and I'm an STCU member. The windstorm of 2015, who doesn't remember that? It had no power for the heaters, and the horse drop was a 600-pound block of ice. STCU stepped up. I went straight down. I got the loan I needed, but it hadn't been for STCU and the ability to provide everything I needed. Where would I have been? I'm Danny Horton, and STCU is here for good. And a big welcome back to Everett Community College as we're about ready to get rolling with men's Elite Eight basketball. Again, hello everybody, I'm Wes Tucker. I'll be keeping you company. So let's go through the starting lineups for today's contesting teams. For the South Puget Sound Clippers, the number one seed out of the West, it'll be Caleb Paquette, DeMonte Malloy, Hunter Sipe, John Moore, and the big rebounder, Wes Reynolds. And now for the Peninsula Pirates, it'll be Cameron Burton, Colby Jackson, Kalen Crane, Trent Warren, and Marky Adams. Going to be a very physical matchup today, and we're going to have it all right here for you on STSPN and the NWAC Sports Network. 
So stick around. Plenty more coming your way after this. So we welcome you back to Everett Community College as the Pirates have made their way onto the court. Now just awaiting the Clippers. Again, an Elite Eight matchup with these two teams. We'll have another one for you a little later. And here it'll be Lynn Benton taking on Walla Walla. Yours truly on the call as now it looks like we're about ready to go. It's Marky Adams and Wes Reynolds making their way to center court for tip-off. And we're about ready to get off and rolling. Basketball is up and it goes to the Pirates first. It's gonna end up in the hands of Colby Jackson. Jackson moves up the near sideline toward the corner. They give to Adams. Adams double contested by Reynolds and also by Malloy. And long three from Jackson, no good. And Adams with the rebound, but he can't finish it off, and this time he does. The first two points of the morning are going to go to the Pirates. They lead 2-0 again, 19-30 remaining in half number one. Sipe with the ball. They go outside to Moore. Moore pushing up. Goes back to Sipe again. Sipe driving. They go to Malloy. Malloy for three. No good. And the rebound taken that time by Crane. Heavily contested, however, by Wes Reynolds. Burton with the rock. Gives off to Jackson right in front of the Clippers bench. They go outside to Warren. And here comes Burton. And Adams finishes it off. Burton ends up with an assist. But Adams been stellar in the paint so far for the Pirates. And contested three from Sipe is going to go off the back of the rim. Warren on the rebound will immediately hand it off to Jackson. Up it goes, and Crane can't bring it back down. A little bit of an alley-oop attempt there, trying to get Crane. Ball just a little too high, however. Rolled off of his fingertips and out through the baseline. So it's Clippers ball. They give off to Paquette. Paquette near the free throw line. Reynolds driving hard, but he's not going to be able to collect the points. A lot of contact, but no whistle. As Jackson looks around, finds Warren. And very fast-paced offense for both of these teams. They love to run. As Warren with the ball gives off to Jackson. Jackson to Crane, and Crane will give off to Warren. Shot clock down to five seconds. They give to Adams. Adams pushing two. Marky Adams has all six points scored in this contest so far. Paquette with the rock. Goes outside to Sipe. Sipe driving in. Will back up. Give the ball to Malloy. Long three from Paquette. No good. Rebound Warren. Well, the range game has not worked out so far for the Clippers. See if they try to make adjustments. They do have someone who pushes up very well, that being Wes Reynolds, who's currently posting up Marky Adams. And here's a shot for three from Jackson. Then a try to finish it off by Crane, but Moore comes away with the basketball. Moore. And intercepted. Nice work out there to take it away. Up it goes from Burton, but brought down, and it's going to be Clipper basketball. Sipe able to save it from going out of bounds. 
They hit Paquette on the far sideline. They go right back in the middle to Moore. Here comes Sipe, and good defense there from Adams. It's going to remain Clipper basketball. So a couple of new Clippers will check in. Reitman, one of them, had a stellar performance against Yakima Valley. They took down Yakima Valley by a final score of 76-75, and Reitman contested three, no good, but there's a foul. So three shots for Reitman. But again, that game against the Yakima Valley Yaks came down to the buzzer. Just able to take that win. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Peninsula Pirates had a little bit of an easier contest against the Clackamas Cougars. Were able to come away with the 87-74 victory to advance here to the Elite Eight. So Reitman, 85% free throw shooter, has knocked down both of them so far in this set of three. Third shot is up, and it's good as well. So Burton with the rock. They give off to Warren. Warren outside. Burton. No good on the three. Reynolds not able to get to it in time. It's going to remain in the hands of the Pirates. Nolan Black, the other clipper that checked in with Reitman. And James Buckley has checked in for the Pirates, and they give up to Warren. Warren contested two and still comes away. Eight to three the score. Pirates with a five-point lead with 16-13 remaining in half number one. The steal, and they give up to Burton. Burton will give it off easily to his teammate Shepard, who lays it in for two, and that's going to force a Clippers timeout. So we will step away a seven-point game here early in this Elite Eight matchup. And after the timeout, we'll see what happens with the Clippers. Again, they have not been doing well in the range department. See if they try to change their approach, try playing up a bit more. And it's going to be Clippers basketball. Reitman puts it on into Paquette, who will make his way across the line, being guarded by Colby Jackson, Nolan Black, and Wes Reynolds will put it up. First field goal for the Clippers. Warren gives right off to Jackson. Jackson over to Burton. Burton being worked on by Reitman. And here goes Jackson. They get Warren again outside Shepard. And Buckley fouled as he was moving up. So it'll be Pirate Basketball from the Clipper baseline. Long throw, they catch Shepard back near half court. Jackson over to Warren, and now pushing up is Crane. Warren for two, no good, off the rim. Malloy with the rebound. Malloy over to Moore. Moore aggressively pushes up, takes a step back, finds Malloy. Beyond the three-point line, Malloy pushing up for two, no good. Warren on the rebound. Buckley with the rock as it nearly taken away. Shepard comes away with it, and Burton defended nicely, but it'll still be Pirate basketball. 
How about the defense there from Nolan Black? And timeout will be taken, so we step away again. Soldiers in the Guard's intelligence field gather information on the enemy using a variety of tactics. Scanning foreign communications, conducting interrogations, and debriefing friendly contacts, all while delivering and coordinating data to help allies on the battlefield or stop civil emergencies. The enemy can't hide from Guard intelligence. And back at Everett Community College, we get a look at our officiating crew down there. Been doing a fantastic job all weekend, and we look forward to having them back next weekend for Final Four All-Stars and Championships. So the Clippers over there trying to figure out what is going wrong and what can they do to get back in this game. My personal opinion, stop trying to take the heavily contested three, get open or play up a little more. You got someone like Wes Reynolds who can truly push up into the paint, give him a chance to go off post. He's going to be guarded by Marky Adams. So possibly a challenge there as the Pirates make their way onto the court. Burton with the rock, trying to find an open man, gets it to Adams, and they'll go out to Jackson. Burton again. Ball comes into Adams, and Adams tries a mid-range two. Nobody was covering him there. The one posted was black, but he was a few steps off. So Reitman with the basketball gives up to Black. Malloy feigns three, pushes up, and they're going to call a foul on Burton. That is Burton's first personal. However, the team's second. And Malloy to bring the ball in. They give over to Moore. Moore outside to Reynolds. Reynolds to Black, and that one's out of bounds. It'll end up in the possession of the Pirates. So Crane will check back in. He'll replace Burton for a while. 10 to 5 with 14 minutes in, 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Shepard, they dump it right back off to Crane. Crane into Jackson, mid range two. There it is. So 12 to 5, uh, scoring has opened up again after the timeout. The Pirates are the first to come away with points. And Reitman pushing up and one. And Reitman still down on the court. He took an awkward landing there. May have hit the tailbone incorrectly. Then again, is there really a way to land correctly? When landing on the tailbone. No, there is not. Training staff's going to come out and take a quick look at him. And we will step away and give him some space, but don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back with more NWAC basketball. WWCC is affordable. Find your way. Attend part-time. Direct transfer. Join the fun at WWCC. So very tough play by Maxwell Reitman, who is now in the NWAC tent getting a Closer look at from the training staff, and here it is right here. 
Take a look, and yeah, just an awkward landing there at the end of the run. So coming into shoot form is going to be Nolan Black. Black, a 25% free throw shooter on the regular season. Lines up for the three-point play and not able to take care of it. Adams on the rebound. Jackson gives off to Shepard. And winner of this game will go on to face the winner of the Lynn Benton Walla Walla game. We'll have that game for you at 4 o'clock. Hope to have you on board for that one as well. Moore on the outside, pushing and traveling. It'll be called on Malloy. So 13-13 remaining, a five-point ball game. And with the ball now, Jackson. Cole Huis checking in. The six-foot-three sophomore out of Salt Lake City. And Crane has some problems up front, and Moore comes away with it after. Sight pushing is Moore, not able to finish it off, and Adams. Jackson around the outside, finds Shepard contested two, it's good. It's a fantastic shot there as we rejoin the action across half court, Sype. Pushing and going in after flirting with the rim for a minute. Still a five point game. Jackson directing traffic. Outside and a quick takeaway for the Clippers. Moore ends up with the ball. Wasting no time, they go outside to Wes Reynolds over to Sipe. And Black is fouled. And that foul is going to be on Huish, his first personal. The team's fourth. And Black go to the line. Again, Black 0 for 1 thus far today from the free throw line. Make that 1 for 2. And Black in the regular season up to this point only had four, three, four free throw opportunities. And with this three here today, he's just about matched his season total. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Burton with the ball, goes outside to Jackson. Jackson, wheesh for three, no good. Paquette, and more uncontested, but no. It'll be Pirates basketball from the baseline. Adrian Dick will check in for the Clippers. Six foot six freshman. And he'll be in the far corner right now on Huish. Jackson looking for an opportunity, tries to go to Warren. And there's a foul called on Paquette. So it'll be Pirate basketball from just to the left of the Clippers bench. Burton. The outside, they go Jackson. Burton pushing up and out of bounds off the fingertips of Huish. So with the ball now, Paquette, good news. It's that Maxwell Reitman no longer in the Anoak tent. He's back on the bench with his teammates. Reynolds. And overthrowing Paquette. Again, momentum taking into the left. The ball, however, straying to the right will end up in the bench of the Pirates. 
So as the first 10 minutes of this game are about to tick away. It's been a good one thus far. 14 to 10, both teams a little stymied as of late when it comes to scoring. Jackson looking for an open man, finds Warren. Weesh from the corner and splash down. The first three drained today. Sipe pushing up. Reynolds comes away, and they go to Paquette. Paquette to Reynolds. And Moore seems to have caught the arid pass there. And Moore spinning and shooting two. Warren to Burton. Three feigned by Huish. And now Warren playing with Reynolds. And Paquette comes away with the basketball. Pushing up and is foul. So Paquette will make his first trip to the line today. But a timeout before we do. So we step away once again. 17 to 12, a five point ball game from Everett Community College. My name is John Archuleta and I'm a loan service bankruptcy officer with STCU. I help members that are struggling with their financial obligations. A lot of times people feel as if they're not good enough. Their finances are telling them that they should have known better. Our goal really is the financial health and well-being of the member. We are our members. Our members are us. We don't have investors here. We're not protecting the investor's bottom line. No matter what's going on, we're dealing with people's lives. I'm John Archuleta and STCU is here for good. There is no obstacle an engineer can't tackle, build around, or blow up. Skilled and versatile, these soldiers pave the way, building fortifications, detecting and destroying mines, or restoring electricity after a natural disaster. Nothing stands in the way of a guard engineer. So back here at Everett Community College, 940 remaining in the first half. Get a good look there at the Clippers bench as the huddle breaks. And it's a good time to remind you, today's game brought to you by the Northwestern Athletic Conference. Fans, be sure to check out the NWAC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest NWAC news. And visit nwacsports.org for the most recent information on scores, schedule, stats, and more. So Paquette will go to the line to shoot. He's a 78 percenter. When it comes to free throws, he lines up. Shot is up and good. Again, Paquette drew a foul right before the timeout, trying to push up to the basket. Opportunity here to make it a one possession game. Shot is up and good as well. Paquette had 60 attempts at a free throw in the regular season, made 47. And they'll give to Jackson. Jackson able to cross half court in time. Sipe with the steal, and they go to Moore. Moore over to Reynolds. And from downtown, no. Getting his own rebound, however, and pushing up was Adrian Dick, and he'll be fouled going to the net. A 70 percenter when it came. Two free throws, had 10 attempts, drained seven. And now he lines up. Shot up and good. Adrian lining up once again. 17-15 as of now, make it... Stay that way after missing the second. Burton on the outside to Warren. Warren right back to Burton. And Buckley nearly loses it. Shepard and Jackson's able to finish it off.
So here comes Paquette once more outside Sipe. Trying to find it and with a right hook puts it in. Under nine minutes to play here in half number one. Buckley across the court to Shepard. And long three from Burton skipping off the rim and into the hands of Adrian Dick. So Moore in a dead stare with Burton as he backtracks a bit. Shot clock at 15 seconds. And they're going to get more for traveling right in front of the Peninsula bench. And it's going to be Burton putting the ball into Jackson. Taking his time, getting it across half court, does so. Paquette waiting for him, and there's a foul. And they're going to say it is on Paquette. A little bit of a push there. It's going to be Peninsula basketball. Just over eight minutes remaining. And Jevin Warren, six foot tall freshman, will check in. Going to give Paquette a little bit of a break because Paquette has a couple of fouls to his name now. They go over to Jackson. Jackson to Shepard. And no basket. Are going to say that it happened before the ball was in the air. So it's going to happen. So they throw in from the baseline. Burton directing traffic. Go outside to Warren, Warren to Jackson. Jackson outside, Buckley from downtown, no good. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half of play. And Warren off to Buckley again. Buckley pushing the matter. They give to Warren who shoots three. Splash down from downtown for Warren. And here comes Malloy trying to respond there. A five-point game has become again as Malloy's not able to finish it off. Reynolds on the rebound. And it's going to go out of bounds. Trying to save it that time was Warren but he was not able to get there in time. Pirates basketball from the near sideline. Moore right in front of Jackson. Jackson's gonna go to Buckley. And Warren the three. Splash down again. Warren's last two shots for three have both been perfect. And here's the push up from Malloy and not able to finish it is Black. So the Pirates trying to start a little run here. 6-0 at the moment. Burton. Off to Warren, Warren over to Shepard. Shepard right back to him. Here goes Jackson, and that's good. So we'll see how Malloy and the Clippers can respond here, being socked right now with an 8-0 run. Sight for three, and that run ends. Seven point lead for the Pirates as Burton Looks around, finds Warren open. And Burton pushing the matter, and a foul. And it's gonna be an offensive foul, they're gonna get Burton for charging. That's the second personal foul on Burton. And Malloy's gonna go to the bench as well for the Clippers, have a quick conversation with Coach. 
A seven point deficit for the Clippers. Again, the number one seed out of the West was Puget Sound. And they're playing the number two seed out of the North. Black looking for an opportunity, finds more. And it's going to be a foul this time on Buckley. That's Buckley's first, and that's going to send Sipe to the free throw line. Sipe, a 73 percenter. Will drain it so he'll get the opportunity to complete the one and one. Got the rock at the line, set, and no good on the second. Buckley coming away with it. So a two-possession game, 27 to 21, five minutes remaining in the first half. Warren and Buckley staring each other down. Jackson feigns three, they give outside to Warren. Warren has to lob it back in, and Jebin comes away with it. Outside the Sipe, he's able to keep it from going out of bounds. We'll give it right off to Moore. Jebin Warren for three, no good. And lots of contact. And conversation happening now, but it looks like a timeout will be taken. So, things heating up here in the first half, a six-point game with 4.37 remaining. As certified jumpers, divers, and survival experts, special forces are dropped behind enemy lines to train foreign fighters, carry out covert missions, or prevent future conflicts. These soldiers live for the challenge. Highly trained and highly intelligent. Special Forces soldiers are the best of the best. Today's game brought to you by the Jet City Roller Girls. Jet City Roller Derby brings the sport of roller derby to Sonomish County. Tickets for Jet City's 11th season are available now with doubleheader bouts at Edmonds Community College. Featuring a family-friendly environment and a beer garden, find a skater handing out flyers to receive a discount off entry to the next bout. So we get a look over here now as we're set to shoot again. It'll be black doing the honors. This free throw here will tie his season total of trips to the line. And not able to come away with it. Shepard with the rebound. And now it's Jackson. Jackson gives off to Warren. Buckley moves near the net. Jackson takes a step back. Trying to work his way around Moore. Warren contested three, no good. Take away there, Black, and it's stolen. So four minutes remaining, and Peninsula an opportunity to pour it on. Warren over to Shepard. Shepard will dump it right back off. Buckley pushing outside corner, three is no good that time from Jackson. And here comes Sipe. They get to Black, who can't finish it. And Buckley comes away with the ball. Big missed opportunity there. And Peninsula will regain possession. Nearly losing at that time was Buckley. Corner three is no good that time from Huish. However, the offensive rebound there, Jackson. And Buckley from the corner. Splash down. The Pirates have woken up the range game. 
And Sipe with the rock now for the Clippers, trying to push up, and it'll go out of bounds. Pirate basketball. Sipe looking for a foul there. Claiming that Buckley was the issue. Instead, it's going to be a throw in from their own baseline for the Pirates. Malloy checks back in for the Clippers, as does Wes Reynolds. Jackson over to Buckley. Buckley over to Crane. And they go in to Shepard. Shepard right back to Jackson, pushing and able to get it back. How about that? Two and a half minutes remain. Malloy with the basketball, moves it across half court. They give outside to Jevin Warren. Sight for three. No good. And a foul. Say that foul on Wes Reynolds. His first personal, team's fifth. And after a quick conversation down there at the officials' table, the timeout is going to be taken by the Clippers. 2-17 remaining in this first half. So don't you go anywhere as we get a quick look at the Peninsula bench there. Things going their way. And we'll be right back after this. So we welcome you back. 2.20 left to play here in the first half, and Buckley going to be doing the honors from the Peninsula baseline, bringing the ball back in play after the foul on Reynolds. Jackson back over to Buckley. Buckley over the head of Crane to Shepard. Crane is going to get, get a foul to him, actually. So it'll be Clippers ball from their baseline now. 32-21, an 11-point game at the moment. Peninsula with the lead. Moore looking to get around. Shepard and tries to spin for two and collects them. So three possession game here as we click underneath two minutes in the first half. Jackson to Crane, a lot of contact and a late whistle. And that foul is going to be on Sipe and that's going to send Crane to the line. That's Sipe's first personal, team sixth. As Crane is all set to shoot, shot one, no good. Crane an 83% free throw shooter in the regular season. Ended up with 336 total points as well as he drains number two. Moore with the basketball, crossed half court. Reynolds will get right back. Moore for three. No good. So Jackson goes to Warren. Goes right back. A little game of catch going on. Finds Buckley near the corner. Buckley pushing the matter up. Big Jackson to Shepard who will lay it up and in. So 
So Seif pushing the matter now. Outside they go to Warren. Jevin Warren up and not enough for two. And Crane doing a little bit of battle with his own teammate Shepard for that rebound as we enter the final 60 seconds of play. Underneath it actually in the 50. Jackson contested three, splash down. 35 seconds remaining. 38 to 23 the score. Sipe is going to be called for traveling. He did slide a little too far, and the referee right on top of it. So 27 seconds even. And it's going to be Crane. Buckley. And now Jackson. Down to the final 20 seconds. They go to Warren, but he can't keep it in play as the ball is a little too high. It will end up behind the bench of the Clippers. Clock continues to tick down. Shot clock and game clock, one and the same. More over to Sipe. Sipe to Malloy. Clock down to five. Sipe for three. And looks like he got a hand on it that time. Was Crane. Two, one. Buckley. No good. So the first half has been all Pirates. They lead 38 to 23. So don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back as the teams head into the locker rooms. Second half coming your way. Training is definitely making myself better, but I know that it's going to end up making my teammates better. You have to know your teammate and know what they need. The cohesion on the field and off the field is what makes everyone strong. Being on a team, you know it's not just you out there. I would do anything for the player next to me, behind me, in front of me. Practicing day in and day out, trying to be the best me so they can be the best them. It's like a sisterhood that you have with those girls. It's just really empowering. They're all doing crazy things. And you want to be like them and you want to push yourself like them. Motivates me to work harder, to get faster, quicker. Pushing each other so hard, all for the same goal. And then when you accomplish it, that's the best feeling in the world. Once you tap into that, I think you're unstoppable. And welcome back to Everett Community College. Wes Tucker here keeping you company. I made a couple uh, more friends from all. I got a chance to talk to a couple of your teammates yesterday. So you guys pulled out a uh, fantastic win yesterday, advancing to the Elite Eight. And you guys are seeing a great game down here. So what do you ha what do you think about the game we're seeing right now? Uh, it's good. It's nice and physical. It's up and down. It's going to be a good one. You know, uh, both teams can shoot the ball really well. And, uh, it's, uh, we've been working on all year as, uh, as a defensive-focused group. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got to play, uh, play the best of our abilities on defense. All right, you guys are going to be facing a Lynn Benton team that doesn't exactly have a uh, set group that plays. All 13 players play a lot of minutes. So what's going to be the key here with all these different looks you're going to get? Um, just kind of stay focused on what we do. Kind of don't get organized with what they do as much as play solid defense. You know, it's going to come down to who's going to execute the most, who's going to make the less mistakes. Yep. Um, you know, they're a great, great group of guys, and they have a lot of guys that play, you know, a minimum amount of minutes that everyone plays a lot and uh, you know it's going to be hard to keep up with them knowing that we only play eight guys really so uh, we just got to have fresh legs and try and keep up with them. All right and uh, you guys again seeing a great physical game down here Peninsula currently up ahead which personally would you like to see in the final four? You know it, it, it doesn't matter who we who we play you know because we it just comes down to who's going to execute, execute the best 
uh, you know, anyone can have an off night or an on night, and uh, it all just comes down to uh, who wants it more at this point. Yep. All right, awesome. Well, it was great to yep. have you guys up here. Look forward to seeing you guys downstairs. Appreciate it. And don't you go anywhere. We've got a lot more NWAC basketball for you as the Elite Eight continues here on Sunday. Final day of weekend. Historic, unique, exciting. As challenges continue to test the mettle of Americans, your community has to depend on willing citizens just like you to answer the call and respond to local disasters and other times of crisis. You may be surprised to find out who we are and what we do. In fact, it could actually be your story too. The Air National Guard. From the arrival of the first colonies in the New World until today, communities across America have depended on their own local patriotic citizens to be available for extraordinary challenges as a part-time militia guard. For over 300 years, they have been in every war and rushed to the scene of every natural disaster. At the turn of the 20th century, when airplanes were used for various military needs, the State National Guard units flew for domestic use as well as preparing for wartime needs. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in... And back at Everett Community College, Wes Tucker here with a few new friends from Lynn Bang. Good to see you guys. See you. Boy, it seems like just yesterday I had a couple of you guys up here. And you too, Coach Everett. How you been? Uh, doing great. You know, wind, winds are always fun and you sleep well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And uh, you guys have been enjoying your stay out here at the tournament? Going to take it all in? Absolutely, and it's been uh, beautiful weather, beautiful yep. facility. It's being run uh, extremely well, so we're just excited to be here. All right, awesome. So you guys have a good Elite Eight matchup coming Absolutely. up against uh, Walla Walla. So you guys had a chance to take a look at some film, play them before. What do you think? Uh, yeah, we definitely had a chance to take a look at some film last night uh, in our rooms. You know, we used all trusty YouTube and whatnot and watched <laughs> their game yesterday uh, they're a very talented team and uh, you know we look to go out and uh, compete against them today and hopefully come out with a W. All right and what are your keys to this going to be what's going to be the biggest key to taking down Walla Walla in the Elite Eight? We got to get stops I mean it all comes down to defense if we get stops I think we'll be all right. All right and coach any words of encouragement for you guys before you get onto the court? We're going to continue to do what we do we're not going to change anything up uh, you know this is our uh, 32nd game of the season and like I, I have been telling the media you got to dance with who bring you and uh, we're just going to do what we do we're going to push the ball we're going to play everybody we're going to press and we're going to shoot quickly and and shoot threes and keep attacking all right Everett, always a pleasure to have you up here my thank friend. you very much always a pleasure to have you guys yeah, too it. and best it, of luck to you as you take thank on you. walla walla more elite eight basketball when we come back at ever community college red lion hotels corporation is built to thrive with innovative programming and in-the-know staff, our hotel brands offer guests great stays and a chance to immerse in local culture. Red Lion Hotels and Red Lion Inn & Suites are better than ever. For travelers who want to get lost and discover adventure, we open the door to the best local experiences. We have reinvented the loyalty program. Introducing Hello Rewards, the first recognition-based loyalty program that encourages members to go further, fly higher, travel better, with tailor-made rewards. And we're not stopping yet. Presenting Hotel RL, our newest hotel brand. Inspired by the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest, an uplifting, relaxed atmosphere, a staff that loves what they do. For adventurers at heart, Hotel RL will inspire an amazing journey. Our future has never been brighter. Three strong brands, an expanding portfolio, industry-leading innovation with turnkey solutions, simple fee structures, areas of protection, continued support from day one. We make partnerships easy. Reach a new breed of traveler with RLHC.
Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? Or am I cheating myself? What you say, please? Whatever you're gonna do, claim it. Leave your mark on this world. My name is John Archuleta and I'm a loan service bankruptcy officer with STCU. I help members that are struggling with their financial obligations. A lot of times people feel as if they're not good enough. Their finances are telling them that they should have known better. Our goal really is the financial health and well-being of the member. We are our members. Our members are us. We don't have investors here. We're not protecting the investor's bottom line. No matter what's going on, we're dealing with people's lives. I'm John Archuleta and STCU is here for good. The first day of school is kind of scary. You don't know your teachers yet or who your friends will be. But school is really important. It's how you learn things and grow. Okay, I'm ready. You're going to do great, Mommy. For you. For them. Clark College. Get started today at clark.edu. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? Or am I cheating myself? What you say, Quaid? Whatever you're going to do, claim it. Leave your mark on this world. Soldiers in the Guard's intelligence field gather information on the enemy using a variety of tactics. Scanning foreign communications, conducting interrogations, and debriefing friendly contacts. 
all while delivering and coordinating data to help allies on the battlefield or stop civil emergencies. The enemy can't hide from Guard Intelligence. Red Lion Hotels Corporation is built to thrive. With innovative programming and in-the-know staff, our hotel brands offer guests great stays and a chance to immerse in local culture. Red Lion Hotels and Red Lion Inn and Suites are better than ever. For travelers who want to get lost and discover adventure, we open the door to the best local experiences. We have reinvented the loyalty program. Introducing Hello Rewards, the first recognition-based loyalty program that encourages members to go further, fly higher. And today's game brought to you by Clark College. Clark College in Vancouver, Washington is enrolling for winter quarter. Whether you want to advance your career, complete a degree, or earn your high school diploma, Clark College can help you reach your goals. Visit clark.edu to learn more. And a shot there of the championship banners that will be awarded next weekend here at Everett Community College. As we are about ready to get things off and rolling. It's going to be Clippers basketball from center court. So Paquette will start things off with the ball. Paquette trying to dance his way around Jackson. And now Moore with the rock. The outside Sipe. And pushing back, here's Paquette fading three, pushing back to the free throw line, and Sipe splash down from downtown. And that ball being brought back in by Malloy. Great speed to get out there in time. Sight for three. This time no good. Crane on the rebound. And now Jackson. Gives off over to Burton right quick. First minute gone here in the second half of play. A 38-26 game in favor of the North number two seed, Peninsula Pirates. They go to Marky Adams, goes up, and this time Burton puts it in. 40 to 26, a 14 point lead for Peninsula. And here goes Moore, they get back out to Sipe. Sipe pushing, go out, Moore contested three. Splash down. And Adams was alone until Reynolds caught up to him. And now Burton assessing the situation. Goes to Jackson in the middle. Long three. No good. So Sipe with the ball. Pushing matters himself. Spins around, gets the ball to Reynolds, and Reynolds can't finish it off. Sipe again, the offensive rebound. Paquette now. Moore into Reynolds. Reynolds feigns a handoff, and Warren's there to sniff it out. So a little failed play action there. And Jackson will give off to Warren. Jackson looking into the eyes of Moore. Burton over to Warren. Crane from the free throw line, no good. And here comes Sipe again. Throws back to Malloy. Malloy pushing up and off the fingertips of Reynolds. It'll be Pirates basketball. Oh, 
So it'll be Burton to bring the ball in. They go to Buckley. Heavily contested, but the ball remains in Peninsula hands. Jackson getting set up to go again. Some quick defense and a baseball pass down. And Warren able to keep it in. Buckley comes away with it. And Marky Adams. And one. Adams up to that point. Had four points, pardon, six points to his name. Now eight. As he lines up at the free throw line. So the three-point play not going to happen as Paquette comes away with the ball now. Pushing up, just Adams in his way, and he puts it in for two. A lot of contact, but no whistle. As Burton continues to push up, Reynolds goes down, and there's a whistle. And it's going to be Peninsula basketball from the baseline. Take a look, a little confusion on the bench there. As now, just a quick wipe down is needed underneath the basket. And they give it the old happy feet test. Again, a good one brewing here, 41, pardon, 42 to 31. And always good seats here at Ebert Community College. Right up here in the corner. Really, there isn't a bad seat now that I'm looking very closely at uh, all the available seating options. So if you haven't already, come on out. Take in a game next weekend if you can't make it out today. Again, Final Four and Championships will be live from Everett Community College next weekend. Can't make it, no problem. Catch the games live through STSPN or through the NWAC Sports Network. Buckley will give off to Burton. Burton outside to Warren. Warren back to Jackson. And Shepard, contested by Black, makes it look easy for two. Paquette. Off to Moore. Moore to Sipe, who has found his range in this game. Here's Moore for three. Splash down. Fifteen fifty-three remaining in the contest. Buckley over to Warren from the corner. Splash down. It's rain and threes at EVCC as Moore looked like he was going to try another one, but backs up and will miss a mid-range two. So here goes Jackson. Burton gives inside to Shepard, and Burton from the corner. No good. Ends up in the hands of Sipe. Sipe wasting no time, Paquette for three. In and out, no good. Sipe on the offensive rebound, can't finish it off. How about Malloy, yes sir. Burton hucks it over to Warren and Warren will go right back to Jackson. Ball in the hands of Shepard. Shepard step back and won't be able to hit that one. Hit both steel and backboard, but nothing else. Malloy for three. Splash down. Forty-seven to thirty-nine. And intercepted by Black. Paquette. We'll try to get back to Black and end up in the hands of Malloy. Malloy outside and shot for three from Sipe is good. 
And that's gonna force a timeout by Peninsula. So we step away as the crowd is on their feet cheering for their Clippers. We'll be right back after this. So we're back at Everett Community College. It is a fantastic game in the offing. As we get a look at the Peninsula bench, things have not been going their way as of late. And a quick correction, it's actually 47 to 42. The Red Hot Clippers, as of late, having a team meeting as well. Boy, Sipe has truly found his range. It was non-existent in the first half, but now it is a manageable five-point deficit. 14 minutes and six seconds remaining in this contest. So this could shape up to be a real beaut. We've had a lot of great games here in the men's bracket. And we look forward to more as Elite Eight play will continue today at four o'clock. Stay in as the Lynn Mitten Roadrunners take on the Walla Walla Warriors. And a lot of faithful for the Clippers have made it out to this game. Sporting the white and blue as we get ready to go. Into Buckley and Jackson will have the ball. Clippers not easing up on defense. Shot clock at 20. As Jackson assesses the situation. Clippers fall back a bit into defense. Uh, failed screen attempt that time from Shepard. And Jackson pushing up a bit. They go outside. Shot from Huish is no good. Victor Black comes back with the rebound. And from the corner again, but nothing that time. Black with the offensive rebound. They give off to Paquette. And now it'll take a couple steps back, set something up. Malloy. Over to Sight, Malloy from downtown. Splash down. We're back to a one possession game, 47 to 45. Jackson finds Buckley. Buckley again. Shot clock at 10, Jackson needs to get something going quick. They go Buckley, Buckley, shot clock at five. Jackson contested three. No good, rebound Malloy. Outside, pushing the matter, Warren. Sight, Paquette the long three, no good, and not able to finish it off that time with Sight, but he comes away with the rebound again. And that one's stolen away, so the Pirates will have the ball in the hands of Jackson now. Just over 12 minutes left in this contest. And Jackson from the free throw line, no good. Jevin Warren. Go outside, Malloy wide open three, but no good. And Jevin Warren will draw the foul from Buckley. So a timeout taken by the Pirates as we've got a great one in the offing, 47 to 45 with 11.40 remaining. The Red Hot Clippers will go back to work after this.
The Guard has over 50,000 wheeled vehicles in action. The vast fleet of Humvees, troop transports, and fuel tank trucks are always moving soldiers, gear, and equipment around the world, or delivering aid to civilians during domestic emergencies. Transport operators are essential in getting the Guard to where it needs to be. I'm Danny Horton and I'm an STCU member. The windstorm of 2015, who doesn't remember that? We had no power for the heaters, the horse drop is a 600 pound block of ice. STCU stepped up. I went straight down. I got the loan I needed. If it hadn't been for STCU, the ability to provide everything I needed, where would I have been? I'm Danny Horton, and STCU is here. So as the timeout wraps up, both teams make their way back to the linoleum. About ready to resume play. It'll be Malloy to bring the ball back in. Sipe will give out to Paquette a little strategy. There and stolen away by Jackson. One on one with Paquette and he puts it away for two. So a quick two points out of the timeout taken for the Pirates. And they go out to Malloy. Malloy feigns three, steps back, goes for three this time, and no. And a foul. And it's going to be Peninsula basketball from their own baseline. So everybody getting back in position. Black will come off and get a little bit of a breather. Jackson with the rock gives over to Burton. Burton outside, Buckley feigned three, decided against it. And now Burton deciding what to do. Give is to Jackson. Jackson, heavy contested three, no good. Reynolds comes away with the rebound. Ten and a half minutes remaining in this 49-45 contest from the corner, no good from Jevin Warren. And a little stoppage here. Players helped up, everybody seems okay. It's gonna end up Peninsula basketball from the baseline. Paquette moving a little slowly. And Moore will check back in as you get a look at Warren heading back to the bench there. And Clippers were red hot going into that timeout. And now they'll get the ball from the baseline. Opportunity here to come back after being socked in the mouth after the timeout. Again, Puget Sound in a very heavy contest between the Yakima Valley Yaks to get to this point. They won by a solitary point, 76-75, as Sipe drains it from downtown. And that one nearly stolen away from Buckley. Buckley trying to get across the line, and they do in the nick of time. They go to Marky Adams. And they'll backtrack a bit now to Burton. Burton right back to Jackson. Shot clock at 10. Burton looking for an open man, finds Buckley. Shot clock at five. Give it to Shepard. Shepard with the shot and in for three of his own. Fifty-two to forty-eight, a four-point contest. Give this to Moore, Moore over to Sipe. Sipe back to Moore, Moore for three! And bricked, Moore gets his own rebound and a foul. And that foul. 
going to be on Buckley. So a timeout taken by the Clippers. So we get another look there, trying to come back and at least tie it with 9.24 remaining. We'll be right back. Medical specialists in the Guard are skilled in CPR, field triage, and emergency life support. Medics stabilize and evac the wounded during combat, come to the aid of civilians in a disaster, and provide day-to-day -day outpatient care. Medical specialists are saving lives on and off the battlefield. Today's game brought to you by STCU. As a financial cooperative founded by teachers, STCU is happy to support the students of the Community Colleges of Washington. You can join our not-for-profit credit union if you live, work, attend school, or worship anywhere in Washington. And quick look down at the scores table. Been doing a fantastic job all tournament as the players make their way back onto the court. It's going to be Clippers basketball from the near sideline, just to the right of the media table. And it's gonna be Malloy to do the honors once the whistle blows and away we go. Moore with the rock. Give this to Paquette. They give off to Sipe after that. Wes Reynolds spins backwards, gives to Paquette again. A contested three from Paquette is nowhere close. Again, a four point contest, 52 to 48. And nearly taken away by the Clippers. Buckley comes away with the basketball, almost intercepted by both Malloy and Paquette. They go again to Jackson. Jackson into Shepard. Shepard looking for an open man, finds Buckley. Shot clock at five. Pushing up Buckley, and he puts it in for two of his own. Clock down to eight and a half minutes. Moore looking for an opportunity. Screen by Sipe. And Wes Reynolds is played defensively well by Marky Adams. So now Burton directing traffic. Jackson looking for an opportunity and puts it away for two after rolling off the rim. 56 to 48, an eight point game now. Paquette looking for an open man, finds Sipe for three. No good that time, Malloy hits Jackson very hard, so that's gonna be a foul on Malloy. And now a quick wipe down job of the court and it's going to be Peninsula basketball from the near sideline. That's the first personal on Malloy. And a timeout will be taken by the Clippers. So the fans here being treated to a dandy as it's a 56-48 game. Plenty more coming your way on STSPN after this. Keith Appleton, Education Outreach Officer at STCU. I have been labeled as frugal. I'm more motivated by saving money than I am about spending money. I essentially have had the same vehicle for nearly half of my life. It's absolutely practice what you preach. One of my passions is mountain biking, and one of the ways that I can afford to have a quality mountain bike is by cutting expenses in other areas of my life. STCU has given me an opportunity to share things that I've learned with the community. I'm Keith Appleton, and STCU is here for good. Another good look at the Clippers section here.
again, the women's bracket will continue next weekend, as will the men's. So we hope to have you tuned in for our final fours and championships beginning next weekend. And here's some tanglement. It ends up in the possession of the Clippers. So Malloy will bring it in quickly to Moore. Moore going around the screen set up by Saipans off to Paquette. Paquette in the corner now to Malloy. Moore feints three, pushes up, goes backwards. Paquette for three. No good. And a hard foul, and down goes Buckley as well as Sipe. And they're going to call that foul on Sipe. That's his third personal foul. So it'll be Pirate basketball from the baseline. A relentless defensive attack here, and boy, oh, boy. And down is Malloy. So it looks like the training staff's going to have to come 10 to him now. He may have caught a knee to the face when he was going through, trying to take the ball away from Buckley. So being tended to now, coach out there as well as the trainer. And we like to take this time to remind you, today's game brought to you by Everett Community College. And it's time for some EVCC trivia. Where can you live just steps from Everett Community College classes and have one payment for rent, utilities, and furniture? The answer, EVCC Student Housing. Check out our student apartments at evcc.edu slash housing. So Malloy up in standing has not yet moved. We get a look over at the Peninsula bench. Trying to maintain this lead they have there. However, the scrappy Clippers team you see right now on your screen looking to cut into that lead. It is a 56-48 contest at the moment. And Malloy went down hard. He is, does not seem to need a trip to the trainer's table. He's back on the bench with his teammates right now, being looked at by the training staff. And a little problem downstairs. Have to get everything reset and ready to go again. They bring in to Warren, and Warren will give it right back to Burton. Burton over to Buckley. Buckley back to Warren, and they're across half court. Looks like Moore went down for a minute. And he's all right now. Pushing the matter is Jackson. He'll give off to Warren again to Buckley. Shot clock at five. Warren looking for Jackson. Jackson pushing the matter. And it's going to be Clipper basketball. Well, it looked like even if they did manage to hold on to it, they weren't going to get the shot off before the shot clock ran out. They were at one second when the ball started rolling. And now a little confusion as to where the ball will be brought in from. 
And now an official is having a conversation with the fine folks over at the scorer's table. And you see there, a little confusion on all aspects. And they were taking a look at where Moore actually took a little slide during the play before. And Moore was down for a quick second but got right back up. May have slipped on something, and that's what they're taking care of. So now that we're all cleaned up, the court's looking nice and spiffy again. We'll get rolling. And another whistle. And another issue with the clock. So they're going to bring in the ball from the sideline. So Moore will give it right back to Paquette. Paquette back into Moore. Moore outside to give to Jevin Warren. Sipe feigns three, goes out. Looks for Warren. Warren for three. Splash down. 56 to 51. This game is far from over. Six minutes remaining. And able to get it across half court in the hands of Trenton Warren. Burton with the ball again. They go over to Buckley. Buckley, mid-range two is good. So Jevin Warren with the rock. Doing battle with Jackson, pushing up and not able to finish it. Wes Reynolds on the rebound. And it goes through the legs and out of bounds. It'll be Clipper basketball. Buckley claiming that Sipe was the last one to touch it. But the official saw something else. So it'll be Clipper basketball from just in front of the scorer's table. Paquette trying to work his way around Jackson. And stolen away by Buckley. Buckley will fall back a second, allow some teammates to catch up with him. Burton trying to work around Paquette and Warren gives to Jackson and stolen away. It's in the hands of Paquette. It's a two on two situation to go outside to Sipe and he'll wait for everybody to catch up. Sipe trying to push the paint and Marky Adams with the steal. So Burton will direct traffic for a moment. A seven point game as it stands right now at 58-51, four and a half minutes remaining. Give out to Burton. Burton pushing up and lays it in for two. Just over four minutes remaining, and it's a nine-point gap separating the Pirates from the Clippers. Paquette for three. No good. Warren on the rebound. Burton across half court. Give us to Warren. And now Buckley in the corner. Shot clock at three, and that shot no good. And coming away with it is Buckley. Buckley can't hold on to it, however, more. We'll hold on to the ball. They go to Paquette. Paquette back out to Jevin Warren. Warren to Moore. Shot clock at 16 seconds. Moore with the basketball. Now shot clock down to nine. And Moore as it's stolen away by Buckley. And Buckley will pass backwards. In an effort to get some reinforcements. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Burton. 
Into Jackson, nearly stolen by Reynolds. And there's a foul. It's going to be on Jevin Warren. That is Warren's first personal, team seventh. And Peninsula operating in the bonus right now, and a timeout will be called. So look over there at a frustrated sideline for the Clippers, trying to figure out how to get back in this game. It's a three-possession affair when we return. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. Be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the movement. movement. Another look down there at the scorer's table. As you get a look at some of the finest folks in the NWAC down there. Been making sure this tournament runs as smoothly as possible. As the huddle down there is broken up. Just awaiting on the Pirates to do the same. Waiting the big question at the moment right now. For the Puget Sound team and Coach Aaron Landon is how are we going to get this done? Turning the ball over as often as we have. The answer, don't turn the ball over. And the first one in from Warren. Again, the foul on Jevin Warren. And here's shot two. Easy. Paquette with the ball. Clippers now trailing by 11. They go out to Jevin Warren. Now to Sipe. Sipe again being contested by Marky Adams. And that one nearly stolen away by Burton. Shot clock at six. The shot off and in and out. No good. And they're able to keep the ball in play. Some great work out there by Trent Warren to make sure the ball stays in. Within two minutes. Pushing good. No. And here comes Paquette. Paquette wasting no time, pushing up and not able to finish it off as Reynolds ends up in the hands of Jackson. No, it'll be in the hands of Burton. Burton in a one-on-one -on -one and will wisely pull up and wait for some teammates. So final minute and 20 seconds ticking off the clock. Shot clock at 15 for the Pirates. And that foul is going to be on Jevin Warren. That's a second personal on Warren. It's going to send Jackson to the free throw line. This is Jackson's first trip there. And away Goes more and more back to Sipe. Long three. Splash down from downtown. So with a minute and two seconds, some life being shown by the Clippers. 62 to 54 is the score. We'll be right back and see if the Clippers can mount the comeback they need. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? 
or am I cheating myself? What'd you say, Quay? See ya! Back at the NWAC Basketball Championships here at Everett Community College, we got a good one. A 62-54 game at the moment. And they'll give in to Jackson. Jackson is going to be fouled by Moore. And no. So before that uh, contact happens, it was a timeout taken by Peninsula. So before we send you off, we'd again like to remind you that today's game is brought to you by Pierce College. Celebrating 50 years of possibilities realized, Pierce College is here to guide you to student success. With more than 60 programs of study at Pierce College, is a fit for you, your life, and your schedule, including short-term certificate programs, transfer degrees, and even baccalaureate degrees. Pierce provides flexible degree options to help you on your path. And your pathway is clear at Pierce College. Again, a big thank you, everybody, down at that table, making this game run smoothly. 59.9 seconds remaining in this contest. Burton with the rock. They'll go to Jackson and Moore committing the foul. So foul committed on the right side will bring us down to the left. That taking 1.9 seconds to unfold. And Jackson will go to the line. And checking in, it'll be Wes Reynolds. He'll take that uh, position in the closest far corner. Jackson ready. Shot is good, so we'll get an opportunity to complete the one and one. And Marky Adams is going to take a position a little further down the court, in fact, inside the key of his own area. And here comes Moore as both free throws were good. Sipe pushing up and collects two. Ball goes in and Moore commits the foul. So Jackson will go to the line again. A very steady shooter from the free throw line. That's the second personal on Moore. As the foul game looks to be the only way that the Clippers can stay in it. So Jackson will shoot. See, so gets all set up. Up and good. 65 56. Boy, you got to imagine that uh, draining this basket here is the nail in the coffin. And there it is. So it looks like at this point, the Peninsula Pirates will go on to play the winner of the Lynn Benton Walla Walla game. We'll have that game live for you here on STSPN and the NWAC Sports Network. As Burton comes down with it, they give off to Warren, and Warren is fouled by Moore. So third personal foul on Moore. Clippers not giving up. Things looking bleak at best. So going to the line to shoot now will be Trent Warren. And Warren will drain the first one easy. Warren three for three from the free throw line today. Opportunity to make it a good four for four here. And he does. Moore 
with the rock, trying to dance his way around Burton, gives over to Sipe. Sipe nearly has the ball stolen, tries to contest it, three, no good. And foul. And this one again gonna be on Moore, his fourth personal. And look there at the bench of the would-be winners of this game. They'll come back next weekend for the final four. They'll play either Lynn Benton or Walla Walla. Warren at the line, five for five. Score 69 to 56. And the rebound that time by Sipe. Sipe over to Moore. Moore on the outside to Jevin Warren. Clock down into the final 15 seconds. Paquette for three. No good. Moore, however, on the rebound. He shoots three, and that one's good. Six seconds remaining. And Jackson will hold on to the ball, and that is the game. A hard fought game, and the Clippers fall to the Pirates. Final score of 69 to 59, a 10 point differential. So we will see Peninsula play the winner of the Lynn Benton Walla Walla game. That game slated to start at 4 o'clock. So we hope to have you on board for that one. Until then, from everybody at the Northwestern Athletic Conference, STSPN, our illustrious crew in the van, always doing such a great job. We bid you farewell, and we'll see you at four.